Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 5 of Zero to CSWP. In this episode, all we're going to be doing is practicing what we have learned in the past 4 episodes so that you are ready for part 1 of the CSWP exam. As well, we're going to be going over some tips and tricks to remember so that you will be faster and make less mistakes during the exam itself as it is timed. So let's get right into SOLIDWORKS. Before we even start our practice, let's look at some SOLIDWORKS customization that can speed up your designs. To customize your SOLIDWORKS interface, we can go up here where the tabs and toolbars are, right click and select customize. There are quite a few ways to speed up your design workflow, but the main three I think you should get used to are the mouse gestures, key bindings, and shortcut menus. Let's start with the mouse gestures. To change these, we can go to the mouse gestures tab. We can see another window opens up. This shows what will be displayed if you hold the right mouse button and drag it. You then can select one of these buttons from the direction we drag. This will make more sense once I show it. Right now, let's just worry about customizing it to what buttons we will be constantly using. To have more selections when we want this menu, we can use this drop down menu and select how many buttons we would like to put. I like 12 as it allows for the most customization. As we can see, the most gesture menu is different depending on if you are in a part, assembly, drawing, or if you are in a sketch. Thus, it allows us to customize it even more to our needs. Although these toolbars have most of what we need, I like to add two more buttons, the mass properties and the equations. We can search the buttons up and then drag them into place, replacing a different button. If you ever feel like you are using a button a lot and they aren't in this quick menu, be sure to add it. We can do something similar with shortcut bars. As we can see, each file type, as well as in sketches, we can edit the menu. And as well, we can search up buttons to add to the menu. The benefit of this menu is that you can house many more commands, but it is slower compared to the mouse gestures. To access this menu, simply press S and select the feature or button you would like to use. Lastly, are keyboard shortcuts. To be honest, I use this the least, just because if I have a button I use enough that I remember its key, I would simply add it to either the shortcut menu or the mouse gesture menu. However, if you like keyboard shortcuts the most, then these are great and possibly offer some of the most versatility if you get good enough with them. You can search up any command to see its key binding or add one if it does not have one. For example, if I search up line, its key binding is L. This is probably one of the only bindings I use, but I would encourage you to try and learn some others if you have the time. If I exit, I can show you how to access the mouse gestures. I right click and drag my mouse. Then if I drag far enough towards the button, it selects it. And then for the shortcut menu, I can simply press S and select the button I would like to use. I will put up a series of drawings that we will be using for practice. The answers will be in the description. Be sure to complete the first drawing before moving on to the next ones. Now let's start our practice. Before we even get started, let's make sure we're in the right units, inch pound second. Then create and assign the variables in the part. As we see, we only need to create a Z, Y, and X variable. Then let's apply the material of our part. It is 6061 aluminum, so let's apply that. Now that we have those, let's take a look at what our part needs. We see there are four main sections we have to think about. The diamond shaped extrusion, the circular shaped extrusion, the flat connection section between the two, and the vertical walls outside. As well, some minor things to notice are the fillets and the small cutout section. Since we have to build features off of each other, starting with our base, let's start with the two simple extrusions. Then we can make the middle section followed by the two walls on the outside. 
Let's create a sketch for the shapes of the two extrusions, starting with the diamond and then the circle. We can use a special rectangle called the three point center rectangle to make the diamond shape. Even though it is not explicit in the drawing, we need a 45 degree angle between a horizontal or vertical and a connecting line to the rectangle so that the diamond shape is defined. Let's make sure to use the global variable for the spacing, as per the drawing, and we can create the offsets of each shape completing our sketch. Much like in the last video, we're going to create multiple extrusions from one sketch, which is what we will have to do because the two extrusions start and end along different planes. Let's extrude the two profiles in their own feature, making sure that we assign the proper global variable in the property manager. Now we can create the middle connecting section by creating a sketch on the front plane, then creating the profile of the extrusion as defined in the section view labeled AA in the drawing. Then we can just extrude it in both directions and an arbitrary length, enough so that the whole volume will be there once we cut away the excess. Now we can create a sketch on the top plane that represents the final shape we want to see on the top. Once we create the extruded cut, we will flip the side to cut, which performs a cut command on everything outside of the sketch profile. Let's create the arcs we need and convert the entities on the outside of the part. Trim as necessary and apply the tangent relations. Then we can create our cut through all to complete this. We can create a quick sketch on the top plane to cut out the insides of our extrusions here. Be sure to use the convert entities, as when the positions of the part change from the global variable changes, you will want the position of the sketch to change as well. 
Then, let's start our wall extrusion by making a sketch of the walls. We can extrude it, but first we should select the top face of the circular extrusion where it starts. then extruding up to body and selecting the part. We can then create the cut by creating a sketch of a triangle and applying all relevant dimensions. And lastly, applying the fillets. Now we are done our part. We can use the mass properties command to get our answers and then change variables and repeat for any future answers where the part does not significantly change. Now in the next drawings, our part changes from a diamond shape to a triangular shape. You can expect small part changes to happen on the exam. We can use the rollback bar, which is this blue bar, and drag it below our first extrusion to suppress or basically turn off features below it. So we can start changing our part without worrying about any possible error messages coming from issues with changing a shape, which may disturb parent-child feature relations. Then we can change our diamond to a triangle, start moving the rollback bar forward, and fix issues along the way. We might have to add or delete relations, or change some features.
then you should be done. You can get your answers again from the mass properties button and then change your variables and repeat. For more practice, like I said in the previous video, you can use either personal projects or what I use, the Model Mania parts. Out of all of them, I would recommend trying the parts from the past years, 2008, 2009, and 2010, with 2009 being a great practice part that I would personally recommend. Thanks for watching that episode of Zero to CSWP. Given you've been practicing, you're now ready to take part one of the CSWP exam. Next episode, we are going to start covering part two of the CSWP exam. So I'll see you in the next video.